Now, I am not against sugar. When it's appropriate and rare. There are a lot of arrows these days pointing to sugar, refined sugar, high fructose corn syrup, that these are really causing some pretty wacky metabolism that didn't exist when we were eating more of the complex carbohydrates. We've done a recent analysis of the Food and Agriculture Organization database. We've linked it to the International Diabetes Federation database, country by country. And what we have found is that while total calories do explain an increase in diabetes rates around the world, the effect size is very small. But when you start breaking it down by what those calories are, turns out the only one that correlates with the increase is sugar. A calorie is not a calorie. Sugar is 50 times more potent than total calories in explaining diabetes rates worldwide. When we started putting fat and carbohydrate on the same plate in the 1700s, we became gourmets. In the 20th century, when we started putting fat and carbohydrate in the same food, we became gourmands. It's when you put fat and carbohydrate together that they don't work. And sugar, because of its unique composition, is the only food on the planet that is both fat and carbohydrate at the same time. Even fatty fruits coconut, olive, avocado, have no carbohydrate. There is no food stuff on this planet that has both fat and carbohydrate at the same time. It's one or the other because that's evolution, that's nature, that's what God did, except for sugar. So you say, wait a second, sugar? Where's the fat in sugar? Ah, sugar's made up of two molecules. One called glucose, which is not very sweet and not very interesting, and fructose, which is very sweet and very interesting, and it's the thing we seek, it's the thing we crave, and they are not the same. Glucose and fructose are very different. Glucose is metabolized by all the organs in the body. Every single living organism on the planet can digest, absorb, and metabolize glucose. Glucose is the energy of life. If you don't have glucose in your diet, your body makes it because your cells run on it. And 80% of the carbohydrate glucose that you consume is metabolized by all the organs in the body. Only 20% go to the liver. Fructose, on the other hand, is not glucose. Fructose can only be metabolized in the liver because only the liver has the transporter for fructose. All of the fructose goes to the liver. So you're overloading your liver. That's the rub. The fructose goes straight to the mitochondria, gets turned to fat. The little bit of glucose goes to glycogen until it's replete, and then it goes to fat as well. And you have a recipe for mitochondrial meltdown, mitochondrial constipation, mitochondrial disease. And when you have mitochondrial disease, you get sick. Fructose is a chronic, dose-dependent, hepatotoxin, liver toxin, which is just like alcohol. In fact, fructose, the sweet part of sugar, is more like alcohol than it is anything else. Alcohol is metabolized to fat, and so is fructose, driving more liver fat that it can't export, more liver insulin resistance, which drives the pancreas to make extra insulin, driving 
energy deposition into fat cells peripherally, driving your weight gain, and the extra insulin is driving high blood pressure, driving heart disease, driving cell division, which leads to cancer, driving changes in the brain, which lead to dementia, driving every single one of these diseases. And when your pancreas can't make enough insulin and it burns out, it drives diabetes as well. And if you look at the diseases of alcohol and the diseases of sugar and obesity, they are the same. Now, fructose and alcohol can both be nutrients. They supply energy. They're natural. And if you're starving or you're glycogen depleted because you just ran a marathon, fructose and alcohol can be used to rebuild your energy stores, and in which case they are not toxins. But if you're not running a marathon, then what your liver cells do with both fructose and alcohol is turn it into liver fat, then it's a toxin. People think that when you add sugar to food, it has nothing to do except increased taste. Not true. When you add sugar to processed food, you kill it. And it's killing us. I'm suspicious of anything that says low fat or diet because you know that that means that they've had to compensate with a lot of these added sugars. If there's more than five ingredients, it's probably a processed food and there's probably not much real foods in there. It is almost impossible to buy those packaged foods without getting a lot of extra sugars that are just going to be toxic for your metabolism. We have created a toxic environment. Now, Kelly Brownell at Yale University first coined the term the toxic environment in 2004 in his book Food Fight. And what he was referring to was the changes that we have made in our society that foment obesity. For instance, food available as never before. Food available in places unrelated to eating, like for instance, whoever heard of having dinner at a gas station, but we do. Designed to taste really good to keep us eating. All of these are absolutely true, and all of these are very important in terms of the obesity epidemic, and I do not make light of them. They are important, but what we're talking about here when we talk about the toxic environment is real toxins, real poisons, things that actually damage your mitochondria and make you sick. That's what I'm talking about. This is about something that we are exposed to, that is going on worldwide, that has changed in 30 years. And there's only one thing that has, and it's sugar.